miaka ya 60s hii lake ilikuwa imejaa maji kabisa na ilikuwa na kiboko mingi sana most of the people here don't understand the importance of this hidden gem many kenyans don't even know there is a lake here we must consider that water management is not just a water issue it's an ecosystem issue sirikali ndio ilinipe isamba na sasa ndio niko nasemekana ati ninakuja kuvukuzwa ndio nataka kujua ninafukuzwa ni yede wapi it's my hope that before long we are going to have Lake Olbosat National Reserve. And once that happens, the law is very clear. If it's a national reserve, anybody who has grabbed land has to go. My name is uh, Elisheba Kamau, and I manage Samawati Conservancy, which is also called Samawati Lakeside Cottages, located at Lake Olbolosat, as you can see it. Right now it's about 7.30, and the weather is quite beautiful. It's sunny, the sun is rising up, and the ambience, the quietness here, you can even hear the birds chirping. There are so many birds around here that people can enjoy to see, especially the bird watchers. One of the characteristics of this lake is that it's a seasonal lake. When, they, when it's dry, it dries off. It can dry off until in the middle, where people can actually walk. There is a time when it dried off and it dried off and people could cross to the other side on foot. So we need to do something about it because if we don't do something about this and conserve this lake, it's the source of uh, Thompson Falls, the famous Thompson Falls. It's the source of uh, Ewasoniro. So the lake actually affects more than five counties. Lake Olbolsat, which is in Nyandarwa County, is actually on the, the northern flanks northwestern flanks of Abadaya ecosystem in uh, which are at the boundary of Daragua constituency and Oljoroko constituency that is. The lake uh, is the lifeline of uh, so many people and lives, not necessarily uh, human beings but also wildlife. The lake affects the life of people along the Wasonyiro basin. So if uh, the lake is degraded, you are affecting the lives of millions of people across the other, uh, the other four counties. That is uh, Laikipia, Samburu, Isiolo and Wajia. Lake Olbolosat is a very important lake. As with many wetlands, it's a very important site for important species. It's an important bird area, but it's also an important area for a lot of diverse ecosystem services. The people that live around there and that have lived there for a long time can tell you that they've observed many changes with species disappearing and also with the levels of the water going down. If we look at the source of this problem, it's from upstream. A lot of the problems with many river catchments is from upstream. Now, upstream you find that the users there are mostly agro-business people, growing all sorts of tomatoes and other horticultural plants. Now, most of them have no conscience on what's happening downstream. So what's happening downstream is as a result of the upstream activities. So, what do farmers do? They abstract water. A lot of them are using gravity uh, pipes, they're using portable pumps, they're using furrows. 
And it's been noted that even some of the streams there, like Narumoro, about 98% of the water is abstracted during the dry season in February. And if you follow the river, you'll find that in some places, there is no water passing from upstream at all. And that therefore, what is contributing to the river getting to Obolosat is actually from the catchment around that area, the local rainfall. If there are significant abstractions upstream, from the, the rivers feeding into it, then that is a permanent loss to that river system. It's a permanent loss to the lake, so it can only diminish. Where we are now is called uh, Karuru Waterfalls. Karuru Waterfalls is in central Moland. So once you've come to Abadea National Park and you haven't come to, you've never visited Karuru Waterfalls, then you are still planning to visit Abadea National Park. We have levels, we have, uh, we have level 1, level 2, level 3. In general, in terms of meters, it covers 273 meters going down. These are, these are called the everlasting flowers. When you see the green there, it means that the water table is very high. You can also see the molands. These are the molands. The way they are green, you may notice that the water level is very high. One of the way the climate change has affected, for the first time, we have seen some uh, wetlands, like uh, there are pods on the central moorlands of Abadeas, which for the first time dried up. There was no water. And this was caused by a continuous lack of cloud cover and rain for a long time. It's also a challenge that uh, we have for the communities. If once they intrude the park, so you can see that uh, the light fire, uh, which causes a uh, batting back to the, to the conservation. And mark you, we are depending on this uh, forest in terms of rainfall. And uh, once it is green, we know that most of the animals will get the pasture to, to graze on. You can even see the leaves with the very seed, good sceneries. From the far end, you can see it's always green. So meaning this is a place where the water table is very high. And in most cases, it normally rains any time. As we are talking now, you can see some bristling. So meaning that any time it can rain. Uh, Hata tiare to my panda chakura. Quavio to na shukur mungu. Haya. Mimi naito a gabriel waidaka. Mimi mkadiwa hapa karibu nalik or borozat. Niri pewa shaba na sarikari mwaka wa 1984. March. Na wakati tulipukuja hapa. To a Tulionesho Yakwamba Kunampaka and by Hatuesi Peter. But I could car the idea Miaka Kum Nakitu Kurianza could talk about to Noa Kansa Quingiria Quazi Kudenga Wakapita Mahali Mpaka Iko Wakaenda Qua Lake. Sisi Kama when you are happy. Turi jarib kurara mita sana. Tuna enda kwa wakati huo hakukua na kaunte kulikuwa na serikali moja. Eh tuna enda tuna pereka marara mishi. Wanasema watatuz watashuruisha hiyo maneno. Tu kila baada ya mwaka 5 tulikuwa tunaenda kushughulika hivyo. Kwa majina mimi naitwa Daniel Logis Adel, mimi ni mkaji wa Nyandarwa na mimi ni mturukana na tunakaa katika kijiji ambacho inaitwa Bahati Village. Wacha niseme hii ziwa 
limekuwa ziwa ambalo lina kutusaidia sana juu kuna mamito kuna madamu na zinaisha na wote wanategemea hizi ziwa katika area lake sio vile ilikuwa ko katika ile mamiaka lake naona kwamba imeanza kudidimia tulikuwa na wandege wengi ambapo wamepunguka tulikuwa na swara wengi ambapo saa hizi hata nikijaribu kutafuta swara sioni mi mwenyewe huwa najiuliza nikiwa mzee hapo mahali niliko ama katika hiyo umri wangu ndege zilienda wapi huwa zinahama ama swara zimeenda wapi kuna watu ambao wamekuja ku grab machamba ambao ni karibu na ziwa huwa wanatumia maji ambayo inastahili kuongezea hii ziwa liwe vile ilikwako nimekwambia kwamba hii ziwa wakati mimi nilianza kuwa mjanja nilipata hii ziwa ikiwa sawa na ilikuwa vizuri sana saa hizi sio ile miaka imepunguka hata mimi nilikuwa na shindwa hii ziwa kweli itatoboa kweli So we made a jetty here. And the boat would dock all the here, all the way here. You see? That was uh, 2016. This boat would dock all the way here. But you can see now it's been blocked by the aquatic weeds. The water has recided. The water used to reach up to there. You see there? Up to there. So we had uh, like a platform where people would just walk, get into the boat and take off. Okay. So where's your phone? You need to put your phone properly so it doesn't drop in the water. Where he kitu yako on his table? Yeah? This is Joe. He's the one who does our boat rides. He's a native here, born here, bred here. And he's also a fisherman. So he's the right person to tell you whether they still get fish or not. Yes. This side, you, it's like you're heading to Olkalao. Okay. But there's a small island that I want to show you. On that side, as I told you, can you see up there? The small structure up there, that is the ark. There. Up there. Up there. So that is the Badeas. Yes. So we moved uh, from Karandi, that is where we were from the beginning. Now we are heading to Kiandufa. Yeah. And this is Shamata area. This is Shamata area on that side. This is Kiandufa. I don't know why it's called Kiandufa. But that's Kianduva. Yeah. Where's the book about? Oh, this is, I'm trying to see with every bird that I'm seeing, I'm trying to see if I can find it in this book so that I can make a notes on it. <laughs> I'm teaching myself bird watching. <laughs> yeah. As you've seen, there's so many species here. So many beautiful species. And sometimes you don't see them all the time. So once I see something different, I want to find it and get the name. You can actually get to see flamingos in December. But you have to be very lucky to see them. Not the pink ones, but the white flamingos somewhere on this lake. The shrinking of Lake Albolosat is a sign that there's something happening upstream. And this is because of human interference. The obstruction of water is going to affect biodiversity because the the fish there, for example, cannot find their food source. Why can't they find their food source? Because the environment is not adequate. It's not adequately supplying their needs. This pollution, remember, from upstream. People are using pesticides, fertilizers, and other, you know, household wastes are getting downstream and into the lake itself. Therefore, you're killing the 
food chain, you're killing the food web. Therefore, you find a cascading effect from the water itself to the biodiversity and this will also affect humans. Human health is closely linked to ecosystem health. If fish cannot survive in an ecosystem that they were surviving before, then humans should not be too comfortable to drink that water or see that as a healthy environment. We must care about biodiversity. Saidi, kuna watu ambao wamechota maji. Ndiyo wa, wanapiga nae pumping. Mboga, carrot, na kila kitu. Kwanza kuaribu Saidi, wanateka za maji ya kutoka badea, ikitarimu katika iziwa. Alafu tena kuna wengine wanatoka katika iziwa, I know the water is being used for uh, irrigation, but I don't believe that this is the way to do it because we cannot kill the lake at the expense of uh, unsustainable and uh, inefficient irrigation systems. The biggest problem is there is no water harvesting. At the domestic level, light from the farms, and this has an effect in what is happening in Lake Obosa because uh, necessarily if people don't harvest water or they don't have alternative ways of uh, harvesting water, then everybody looks at the lake, all the communities around the lake, they look at the lake as the only source of water. Lake Chad is um, similar to what happened to the Aral Sea in Central Europe. Both of these lakes have shrunk to very little they're the bottom end of the river system. So whatever happens upstream, they're affected by it. If there's pollution put into the system, they're affected by it. It's a question of taking away from somebody else, some one person, to give to another. We end up with a tug of war. Majina yangu ni maso wajiro wa theruri. Na hapa diyo kuangu, na sirikari diyo ilinipe isamba. Na sasa diyo nikuna semekana ati nilakuja kufukuzwa. Kwa sababu hata kana kama kuna semekana ati taito ni infarid, mi sikuwa na masini yangu ati nikajitagenezo ya taito. Sasa kama kuna wakona sirikari ni, sirikari diyo inasujua kienye itawafanya. Kwa sababu kuyanye walitupe saba ni sirikari. Nga wenye wanasema ati taito ni infarid, the <laughs> We have seen new roads like the bypasses. We have not seen an uproar. If it was your land and you have a title deed, you are duly compensated. The due process of the law will be followed. In Kenya, most of our catchments, most of our watersheds are affected by deforestation, they're affected by agriculture and other activities that are happening there. These have a cascading effect on the water itself, downstream and the whole ecosystem. We must consider that water management is not just a water issue, it's an ecosystem issue. We must have cross-sectoral plans. The forest area must work with the water areas, biodiversity people must come in. It must be looked at as natural resources, not just as water separately, forests separately. In terms of mitigation, one would have to say, think, well, what is the value of that ecosystem? Um, what are the alternative water sources for people upstream? If they're taking water out for irrigation purposes, then we would want to look very closely at that because of the efficiency of irrigation systems. The only mitigation is to, is to regulate the amount of water coming into the system. The county needs to come up with something, uh, how we can educate them, because we can do hydroponic farming. In, in, in our property we do hydroponic. And hydroponic is something that can supplement now the overgrazing on this riparian run and guys to have their, their kettles and our domestic animals 
inside their plots and they still have food, which means we'll conserve the whole place. It's our hope that uh, in the near future, we'll have the latest or the, a new national reserve. It's my hope that before long, we are going to have Lake Holbosat National Reserve. And once that happens, the law is very clear. If it's a national reserve, anybody who has grabbed land has to go. <laughs>